Hey, you traders. Welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. I wanted to make today's video to talk to you about the pros and cons of each of the brokerage firms that I use. I have had a lot of questions in the comments over the last several months about why I like Tasty Trade or why I like Thinkorswim. And so I thought that it would be helpful for you if I went through each of them and kind of run through what I like using about each of them, what I don't like about each of them. Um, I am not sponsored by any of these brokerage firms. I do have referral links in all of the descriptions of my videos, particularly for Tastyworks and for E-Trade. If you are interested in opening an account with any of these brokerage firms, those are there for you. I am continuing to think about additional trade demonstrations and I've received a number of requests from you guys in my last video and I'm definitely keeping track of all of those comments. One of the things that I struggle with most for this channel is not trying to be um, super upload happy, trying to find a good balance of being helpful and thoughtful and intentional without being super clickbaity or uh, wasting your time because that is definitely not what my ultimate goal is. My ultimate goal for this channel has always been to be helpful and, and thoughtful and what is what is going to be useful for you as traders, particularly if you're new traders or if you're be beginning traders with small accounts. I um, am planning to upload more frequently, but I'm not going to put, commit myself to any upload schedule. Um, but I also want you to know that I am seeing your comments and I am taking down the notes and they will be addressed in due course. I'm not planning to make YouTube a full-time career, which is why I'm not uploading a crazy amount like every day or every three days or even twice a week or even once a week I'm, I'm i'm uploading in a schedule that works for me and that i think works for you um so just know that if you're commenting and you're asking for certain subject matters that i'm not ignoring you it's just gonna take a little time for it to get there okay with all that said thank you for bearing with me through the intro and sort of going through the account updates as well as the channel updates i am going to dig into the video now so a couple of caveats. I did do some general research to confirm my understanding, but the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own. No firm has paid me or told me to say anything specific about them. I will not be talking about Robinhood, Webull, Schwab, Interactive Brokers, or any other brokerage accounts except for E-Trade, Tastyworks, and TD Ameritrade. That's because I have not used any of those other brokerage firms with the exception of Schwab. But that's my husband's account and I don't trade in it very often. So we're going to start with E-Trade. I started using E-Trade in, gosh, maybe like the, the years are all sort of blending together right now. It could be late 2014, late 2015. I started using E-Trade when I first started investing. So this is the firm that I have the longest history with and it is also my largest account. E-Trade is a wonderful brokerage firm because they have a wide variety of accounts that you can choose from. If you want a regular brokerage account like I have, if you want a regular savings account, traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, rollovers, IRAs for minors, they have managed portfolios. If you're not interested in managing your own portfolio, E-Trade will do that for you. If you're a small business owner, you have a wide variety of options for individual and Roth 401ks, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs. It is a great brokerage firm. It has a lot of available choices in that regard, which is why I would highly recommend them. One of the things that I love the most about E-Trade is that it has the best research capabilities among the three that I use. This is the... Um, when you come into an, if you open an E-Trade account and you come in here, you'll have accounts, trading, markets, and ideas, and what we offer. And markets and ideas is where I come to do a lot of my market research. In addition to looking at um, general news sources, this is a great resource that I use on a regular basis. It'll give you an overall snapshot of what the markets are doing, and then you can come and sort of dig in a little bit deeper and see your gainers and your losers by company name. You can do it by symbol, today's change. You have a lot of news activity down here. You can evaluate by sector if you're interested in sort of taking a look at what is happening in a particular sector. Energy, for example, is the one that's coming up first, so we'll click that. 
you can come in here and you can spend a lot of time in the research section of E-Trade to dig in and really learn about what's happening in the markets if that's of interest to you. I personally like it a lot. You can check out global markets. You have world news, world markets, news generally. This is what the setup of a quote or a, app, a stock snapshot will look like on E-Trade. You have the snapshot here, which kind of gives you basic information. The charts tab is something that I refer to frequently. I've used it a lot on this channel. It's certainly not as sophisticated as Think or Swim, but you don't have a lot of ability. I mean, you can. You have all these technical tools that you can use over here, but it's it's not nearly as fast or as, as um, ease of use as, as Think or Swim, but it is something that's available. Also has a news tab. A lot of the same information that you can get up in Markets and Ideas. You can get very narrowed down news information for um, E-Trade right here. The options chains. I've gone over an options chain in probably one of my very early videos, but this is where I would come on E-Trade if I wanted to take a look at the open interest and volume for a particular stock and, and dig into some of the expirations here. The one thing that I will say about E-Trade and their options chains is it's a little bit cumbersome to use sometimes. It's it's not as fast or as sort of easy and straightforward as as uh, Tasty works for Thinkorswim, but um, it is... Once you kind of learn the ropes, it's not too difficult to manage. If you are a dividend investor, this is a great platform because they have a dividend reinvestment program. You can enroll your account in the dividend reinvestment program by selecting this, this little toggle button right here. It's currently not letting me select it right now, and that's because I think I have a couple of withdrawals in progress for stocks that I'm thinking about selling in the near future, but this is where you can manage your dividend reinvestment program on an entire portfolio basis or on an individual symbol basis. Relatedly, there's an estimated income tab, which I think is really fascinating. If you, if part of your portfolio includes being a dividend investor and if you hope that dividends will supplement or completely replace your income in the future, this is a good place to come and check out how you're doing in terms of your income that you can expect to receive over the course of the year. It will lay out the symbols, the payable date, whether it's announced or estimated, the frequency of your dividend, your current share amount, so you can expect what your estimated dividend will be in relation to the current rate. And then if you're looking to build your dividend portfolio based on particular uh, payout months, you can kind of see where your going to receive the most amount of your money versus um, the least amount. And as you can see, in my case, most of my money comes in the standard quarter ends of March, June, September, and December. I get a little bit more, a little bit less in April, July, October, and then even less in May, August, November. So if one, if one thing that I'm looking on improving or building up in my portfolio is dividends that pay in these particular months, this is where I come to take a look at this information to see uh, where I can spend some time in that arena. So this is one area where I think E-Trade is not the best between all three of these brokers. Um, and I don't blame them, I guess, for this, but E-Trade has some of the highest margin maintenance requirements compared to some of its peers. There was a period of time where every day and every other day I was getting another notification symbol you know, alerting me to a change in the margin maintenance requirement for our, our particular stock or ETF. And it was really annoying because it just kept sucking down some of my buying power, even though I had a, a have a fairly conservative portfolio on and I always keep cash reserves and other accounts in case I need to deposit money and um, if there's a volatility expansion. But it's not my favorite. They they can do better, but I understand why in particular because this has been sort of a crazy year and they want to check, like, take care of themselves. But they do have a lot of really high margin maintenance requirements for some um, ETF, some stocks, and that is not my favorite aspect of it. So E-Trade's fees didn't always lean in their favor. I remember when I opened my trading account, I think stocks to trade stocks, it was like $9.95 or $5.95 um, for a long time. And then uh, options was whatever, a similar number. They, it was 
it was no more than ten dollars per trade but it was still enough to take into account for each end of the trade that um i had to be very uh, particular about what i was going to be doing in my accounts because i didn't want to get eaten up in fees but one thing that we can thank robin hood for is the fee uh revolution so to speak among brokerage firms um and i am not going to complain about that so the options contracts are generally 65 cents per contract plus reg fees but if you trade more than 30 times per quarter then you're going to get your options contracts fees dropped to 50 cents per contract per reg fee plus reg fees um which is not hard to do if you're a pretty active trader that could be you can probably meet 30 trades a quarter in a month and then get a drop down I have heard from other people that if you call them and ask them for a 50 cents uh, contract, they might just give it to you even if you don't meet this requirement. But I have not done that personally, so I can't tell you one way or the other if that will work. I just, I'm at this point now where I'm just automatically a 50 cents quarter for however long because I am an active trader. E-Trade also has what is called a dime buyback program for short options. You can close short options priced at 10 cents or less, and there's no contract fee. So they won't charge you 50 cents if the um, short option that you are trying to close costs 10 cents or less. There will be the reg fee associated with it, but that's usually not that much money. E-Trade is a great platform for traders of all levels because it has a lot of different functions and capabilities. It can be much more sophisticated if you want it to be. They have eTrade Pro. So this is what the eTrade Pro platform looks like. This is a desktop application. I do not use this ever. Um, I've gotten so used to sort of the basic trade setup in the eTrade website that I know how to use it with ease and it is not difficult for me to enter and exit trades now using um, just the website platform. It could be a little bit of a learning curve to use the website, but because I've been using it for so long at this point, it's just like reading a book. Um, so this is what the eTrade Pro platform looks like. It is very technical. I couldn't even begin to pretend to tell you what all of this means, but I'm just showing this to you so that you know that it is available to you if you are a trader who is looking for something a little bit more sophisticated or advanced than the basic eTrade website. eTrade also has two mobile apps that you can use. There is the general eTrade app and then there's Power by eTrade. I will look at these apps occasionally when I'm on the road or traveling or if I want to look at the futures market from my couch upstairs, I will use the Power Power eTrade app if I want to check sort of my basic portfolio and see what's going on. I'll use the E-Trade app. I don't trade from them very often, but I have done it a little bit in the past while on vacation, and that's usually just to manage trades. It's really not used for active trading for me, but those there are two applications that are available. On Another thing that I like very, very much about E-Trade compared to some other Horror stories that I've read online is that they have excellent customer service. I assume that this platinum service notice here is just based on the dollar value in my accounts, but I don't know what those levels are. But my customer service rep, his name is Sean, and he's amazing. E-Trade is very fast to get back to you. They're very helpful. They want to make sure that you're satisfied. Um, I will know in relation to the margin note that I had talked about earlier, I was I was quite dissatisfied with, with what they were doing. And because I have so many positions on, um, they did work with me a little bit to reduce some of the margin maintenance requirements for just a small fraction of the positions that I had on, particularly anything that was over like 50%. They were able to make some adjustments, not as much as I would have liked, but I was appreciative of the fact that they went above and beyond to even do it to begin with. So that was really awesome that they even they they made the effort to get there. Um, I have a lot of loyalty to E-Trade. I think that their margin maintenance requirements could be better, but it is not enough for me at this point to transfer the my funds completely to any other brokerage firm. But I do know do want to note that when volatility increases and uh, panic starts to set in, E-Trade is going to be the first person to the first person, the first brokerage firm to really lock it in and um, 
there is the potential if you're not paying attention to your margin maintenance requirements or your buying power capabilities that you could face margin calls. They have not ever, for me, executed any activity in a, in any call setting. I have had margin calls in the past, but they haven't been, um, I guess there's like, there's house calls, which is like the, the brokerage firm's margin calls telling me to put more money in. And there's, there's reg T calls or some other regulation calls. I don't have those very often, but I, in March, for example, I had a couple of margin calls, house calls, and they did not... They they have the right to take action on your behalf if you don't meet those calls within a certain period of time. And sometimes they'll move the dates up sooner than originally in, indicated, which is really, really frustrating, but it has happened to me. But they have not yet, they have never taken action on my behalf and liquidated any of my securities. But just note that that is something that the brokerage firms reserve the right to do if you have a margin account and you are not properly leveraging your assets. Um, so just keep that in mind, but it is, it is, that's probably the one thing that I can say that's my biggest con about E-Trade is, is the margin maintenance requirements or all the things that I can say about E-Trade is that that's my only major complaint is just their margin. They have, like I said, great customer service. They have a lot of applications, a lot of research. Their fees are really low. They have tons of investment capabilities and trading capabilities. And so if you're, even if you're not just an options trader, you can get into ETFs and mutual funds and long stocks or even futures. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't trade futures very often, but I, I do trade futures on my E-Trade account. So that is the overview for E-Trade. Again, these are my personal thoughts and opinions. I'm sure that there are people out there who have had differing experiences, might have other things to say that I did not touch on, but overall, super big fan of E-Trade, would highly recommend. Moving on to the next service uh, will be Tastyworks or Tasty Trade. This is the account of the three that I have had the second longest. I started trading in Tastyworks probably in 2017. I was turned on to Tastyworks by my dad's referral. I had never heard of them before. I, I had never heard of Thinkorswim or Tom Sosnoff before. Um, this is the landing page for tastyworks.com. Quickly, I will go over the account types. They have individual margin accounts, joint accounts, retirement accounts to include traditional and Roth IRAs and even SEP IRAs. But as you'll see, they're a little bit more limited in their account types. They have cash and margin, which is um, standard for all, all of the major brokerage firms. But in terms of like manage portfolios or 401ks and the like that's not that's not here but that's okay and um i see no reason why that would be a con for them it's it's sort of standard they're they're keeping it a little bit more limited for um what i could only perceive to be this is stream of um streamline of services this is the web version of their platform that i um, use almost 100% of the time. I very, very rarely use the desktop application, but I'll show, I'll quickly show that to you. That's something that's available. To me, Tastyworks is very easy to use, very easy to figure out quickly. Um, it does look a little bit weird because there's all kinds of buttons and stuff, but, the, but the, the three tabs that I focused on the most are, of course, Portfolio, which is this version right here. And if you're paying attention, it's been a couple days since I started the video, and now I have a Microsoft position on. Um, so Portfolio is right here. I don't have any long positions on in this account right now, but um, you can have stocks. You can hide the options. You can symbol the groups, or you can look at them on an individual leg level. Um, I don't have any working orders right now, but if you wanted to show or hide your working orders, that's something that is available to you. This is an old version of the table. I guess historically Tasty Works had a, a, a view that perhaps some customers still like, so they decided to keep it. This is a dashboard that you can look at to sort of analyze your probabilities of profit and how you're doing overall if you're into the numbers of, um, into those types of numbers for options trading. So the thing that I love probably the most about the Tastyworks or Tasty Trade platform is their pre-built watch lists. TD Ameritrade has pre-built watch lists on the Thinkorswim platform, which I'll show you in just a minute. But I, 
E-Trade, like it has the market research tab and you can look at sort of some of the gainers and losers, but you'd have to build your own watch lists. I've not seen any pre-built watch lists of this kind in E-Trade. There are lots of options to look at right here, including um, tickers that have high options volume. If you want to sort it by the ETFs, if you want to look at stock tickers that are at a 52 week high or near a 52 week low, which I think is a really great feature of this platform. You can look at it by sector, healthcare. So yeah, so the watch list or the grid is probably my most favorite aspect of this particular brokerage firm because it helps me sort of identify what's happening in the market overall. I can take a look at the trend and see, you know, if most of the market is green. I can see which stocks are having bad days if I want to try to open puts on them. You can sort by price. You can also sort by IV rank. And as an option seller, I've mentioned before that uh, selling options with high IV is often um, a much more preferred route because you tend to collect more premium. So you can sort by IV rank to get an idea of what stocks are currently in the high IV range, potentially make a little bit more money and benefit from IV crush if it exists for that particular stock. And what I mean by that is if earnings are coming up, you're more than, you're more likely to experience an IV crush um, compared to any other event. Uh, the activity tab, you've seen this before on this in this channel. This is where all the um, options trading activity occurs. And then the history tab right here, you can export all this information. There is a journal function on Tastyworks that I never use, but it is something that is available to you. If you want to watch the Tasty Trade programs, you have a tab right here. I would ordinarily be putting this on a different tab and probably toggling between the two of them, but that's available to you. Something that is really cool, and I enjoy this, I don't follow these trades a lot or take these recommendations too often, but I do like to see what the members of the Tasty Trade team are trading and what they're doing. And so this is a uh, trade feed or a follow feed that you can come in and take a look at what Tom and Tony and uh, Fauzia and any of the other sort of hosts or people associated with Tasty Trade are doing. If you want to narrow it down by a particular person, for example, Tom Sosnoff, you can take a look at all his trades over the course of today. Um, it is just sort of fascinating for me just to kind of keep up and see that they're being active in the trading community as well. I, like I said, I don't usually follow these, but I just think it's a kind of a good, it's a good way to get, gather some info on trends. I've mentioned this before and I'll use Starbucks as an example. Um, I like this platform because when you build your potential options trade, it gives you your probabilities of profit right here in this little corner. It tells you how much you're going to collect in credit what your return on capital is, extrinsic value, the bids and the asks. Uh, it kind of breaks it all down for you. And if you want to get dig into it deeper, then you can look at your IV rank, your theta, your delta, uh, how long it's going to take you to get to about 50% of profit or the, the estimated duration that it'll take you to get to 50% of profit. So I, I really do like Tastyworks for this feature as well. I think this is something that is extremely helpful. So similar to E-Trade, if you're an active trader, it is an opening commission of $1 per contract, but zero to close. So if you were an active trader on E-Trade, would, you would equate to $1 per contract on each side because it would be 50 cents per contract. Um, cool thing, $10 max. So if you sold 10 or more contracts, um, you would only be charged $10 total for that particular transaction. If you did 10 individual transactions, then you would be charged a dollar for each of those. If you did 11 individual transactions, you'd be charged $11. But if you did 11 legs in one transaction, I don't know how you do that, but um, you would only be charged $10 max. So that's pretty cool. You also have reg fees for all options activity, including um, stocks as well. So I have mentioned this before. I have an, I have my Roth IRA. I have a, an account that I share with my husband on here. Um, and I had a couple of long positions in my Roth IRA and that were paying dividends. So Tastyworks does have a dividend reinvestment program, but it's not nearly as 
visually interesting or helpful as E-Trade. So there's no sort of graph that will tell you um, what you're getting per month. And, and even when you do get a dividend payment, and I'll just use an example in Macy's, for example. So if I get a dividend payment in Macy's, and, and I'm not currently getting one because Macy's suspended their dividend, but in any event, if I'm getting a dividend payment in Macy's, it's not going to show a fractional share value right here like it does on E-Trade, but it will show that fractional share value on my statement, my PDF statement that I receive at the end of every month. So they have dividend reinvestment. It's just not um, as, I guess, performance wise, it's, you're not getting the same sort of visual information as you would on Tastyworks as you are on E-Trade, if that is something that's important to you. Unlike E-Trade, where I mentioned sort of my issues with their margin maintenance requirements or the margin calls, I have never in the history of having an account with Tastyworks have had a margin call due to market volatility or a sudden downturn in the market. The only time that I have had those, quote, calls is when I've been assigned on a put credit spread. I've been assigned on the short end of a put credit spread. And then the very next trading day, I sell back the stock as well as the long option. Um, so I will occasionally have those emails that say your account is in a, def a margin deficit. You need to make it right by this date. Um, and I do. And that takes literally you know, a couple clicks of the button for, and then the, the trade will get filled. But, but otherwise I've never had volatility squeezes, just like eating up all of my buying power to the same extent that E-Trade does. And I will say that I think Tastyworks has some of the, the best margin maintenance requirements, and I hope they never change that. It's one of the things that I like the most about them. And, and perhaps they, they knew that coming in when they were developing their platform. So this is the desktop platform that I have mentioned previously. Uh, I don't use it very often. It looks like it's downloading a new version. So I'm actually going to hide this thing in the corner over here. Um, this is available to you if you decide that you want to open up a Tastyworks account. I have mentioned this before. I don't use it too often, but it is there and it is helpful if you are interested in something beyond the website. I may have mentioned this previously, but I, I never got used to using this because... I had started trading options on a just a regular computer and and even using like my former work computer and stuff. I always was just web based because you can't download random applications to work computers and I, I wouldn't want to do that anyway. And so I just got so used to using the website. Um, but I have this here on my personal computer, which is where I am right now. Um, you can build your trades similarly. You can look at the table and it is it looks a little bit nicer and, and cleaned up here. So these this is the options chain. You can look at it in the curve fashion, active similar activity, similar access to watch list right here, resets, high options volume is usually the one that I'm always looking at. You can watch the network here. So they do have charting on here, but in my opinion, it's just kind of meh. Um, there are, I'm sure there are ways to make this better. It, it looks like they got a couple of different types of studies that you can add. I honestly don't even know how to use this, so I don't want to ding them on this because I've just been so used to think or swim, but charting is available on here. If you want it, you can look at SPX on the one minute, five minute if you want. So that's, that's something that is available. If you are the type of person who doesn't want to toggle between multiple applications or multiple web pages it it will s serve s most of your needs i think transactions are right here and then you can see your year to date transactions as well as your year to date profit and loss i always find these in these numbers kind of interesting particularly if you're a trader that will adjust or roll positions only for credit of course what in certain circumstances when you are rolling for a credit you are going to be taking a loss for one end of the transaction on paper only, but you're collecting more money into your account. So I always sort of view it as a win if I'm collecting more money, even if the profit and loss statement says it's a loss. But that can be debated, I suppose. It really is just a matter of personal preference. For me, my preference is as long as the cash balance in my account continues to grow, I'm fine with whatever this number says. But let me know what you think about that. 
And again, they have a section right here where you can follow the people that are associated with the Tasty Trade Network, but I don't use this. And this kind of looks a little bit too um, condensed for me. I'm, I'm much more of a visual person and, and like sort of the other um, snapshot view better. Tastyworks does have a mobile application. I Similar to E-Trade, I don't use it very often. I use it to check check positions when I'm on the road if I need to like adjust a GTC order or, or actually put it in a closing order. I'm not actively trading it on it too much. I think Tastyworks has a really great team. Every time I've emailed with them, they've been fairly fast. I wouldn't say nearly as fast as E-Trade, e but that is perhaps based on my, my status as Platinum Service, but I'm not complaining about that. That's I've only ever had to email them. I've never had to call them or talk to them about anything. And, and all of my questions have been satisfied by them whenever I've, when I have been given a response. And so they have support at Tastyworks and like their trade desk at Tastyworks. And um, so their customer service is real. They're live people. They're available for you when you need to get a hold of them, even if you want to call them or email them. I, but email is probably my primary method of reaching out. The cool thing about the Tastyworks program, at least, is that they um, will take viewer emails and calls. And so some of their segments have um, some of their viewers call in and ask questions and chat chat with the host, which I think is always pretty fun. I think it's a way to get people interested, get people connected, and, and continue to build on this community of options traders, which I am a big, huge fan of. Okay, so the last and final account that I will be talking about is TD Ameritrade, also known as Thinkorswim. This is the account that I have most recently opened. I opened this account in the March-April time period when I started this channel, and I mentioned in my last video I, I wanted access to their charting platform because I think that TD Ameritrade or Thinkorswim has the best charts available. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't have a ton of experience with this platform, so take a lot of my personal opinions with a grain of salt. There are a lot of really cool things that can be done on the Thinkorswim platform that I do not do, do not know how to do. So I highly encourage you to continue to do your research if you want to learn about the additional studies that can be set up or how to build watch lists, how to how to use the research tabs and the like on, on the Thinkorswim platform. So similar to E-Trade, uh, TD Ameritrade is a, is a large brokerage firm recently bought out by Schwab. So we're going to see what, what happens with that. But they have a ton of investment products. You can do pretty much everything on this platform like that you could also do on E-Trade. They also have a lot of different account types similar to E-Trade where you have standard accounts, retirement accounts, education, managed portfolios, margin trading, and the like. Um, which makes sense considering that they have a wide variety of um, investment products available. It would also make sense that they would have a wide variety of account types available to you to suit your needs. So since we're focused on fees as well, I think of the three firms and their pricing, TD Ameritrade is the one that is this, I guess, ranks third. TD Ameritrade and E-Trade both start off as 65 cents per contract plus reg fees, but I do not know of any situation for TD Ameritrade where if you trade more than 30 times in a quarter, they're going to reduce your overall contract fees to 50 cents. If you are aware of that, please definitely direct me um, to that information. I haven't seen it. It hasn't happened to me. I'd say I'm probably trading pretty actively in this TD Ameritrade account, but not quite as much as the other two. I usually carry two to three positions on at a time, but in any event, so their their fees are just slightly less great than E-Trade and uh, Tastyworks. Although it's 65 cents per contract, it's not going to break the bank. It's That's just one thing to note between the two. Similar to E-Trade, but set up in a different manner, they have um, an extensive array of education and research information that is available to you if you're interested in, in learning about that. I'm not going to go over it in great detail, um, in part because I don't spend a ton of time on TD Ameritrade's research and education tabs, but these are um, segments of their website that are available to you. I can say that I have received somewhat regularly emails from TD Ameritrade notifying me of educational seminars and on certain topics that are coming up um, all online. 
I think the most recent email I received was on on technical analysis. And so they'll sometimes push those emails out to their customers. And it's free to sign up, free to attend. Um, interesting information, generally in webinar-based format. I, I joined one. I did see a chat function, but I didn't think it was like overall interactive. Um, I will admit that I did not follow up for any of the additional segments, but I have seen it, which I think is um, at least a good thing on their part to make education and research available. Um, you can find all of that information on the TD Ameritrade website right here. You can go to education, you can go to research. TD Ameritrade also has a dividend reinvestment program. You can find this information on their website by uh, searching for DRIP or dividend reinvestment. I don't carry long stock in my TD Ameritrade account yet. I don't have any plans to unless I'm assigned and eventually need to sell covered calls. It's not my plan to turn this into a dividend investment um, portfolio, but if that is something that you're interested in and you want to do on a TD Ameritrade account, you can do that. I haven't seen and I don't know if there is a similar visual setup the way that E-Trade has where you can sort of see your dividends on a monthly basis. So this is what the account overview looks like. This isn't a very large account of mine. It's only got about $5,000 in it, um, similar to the Tiffany Trades Options account. I don't spend a ton of time on the website like I do with E-Trade. I know that some people have traded options from this website. I don't know how to do that, but it is an op that is available to you if you prefer not to use the Think or Swim platform which I'm gonna pop into right now and show you what it looks like. So this is what the login screen will look like for Thinkorswim. You can toggle live trading or you can toggle paper trading. And paper trading is a good exercise for anybody who wants to get the feel for options trading without using any real money. I don't use this particular paper money function because it is delayed by 20 minutes. So you're not going to see the same type of execution and service in a real life market. But I will show you another feature on this platform that I think is absolutely amazing. So this is what the TD Ameritrade Think or Swim platform looks like. This is not the default version of what the platform would look like. I set this up and customize it to my preferences. I have a video on how I set up my charts in this platform um, from a few months ago if you wanna check that out. It will look a little bit different if you decide to open up account and um, use the Thinkorswim platform. It's highly sophisticated. The charting is really probably the best in the industry as far as I can tell, particularly with their studies and, and um, the time and sales and the active trader and just the ability to kind of get into out of trades at a much quicker pace than E-Trade, for example. I have heard that Thinkorswim is sometimes laggy and slow to execute and not the greatest for day traders. This is only based on my readings on Reddit and and hearing about it on Instagram and other social media outlets. I've not personally experienced that, but that's probably in large part because I'm not a day trader. And so when I set uh, limit orders and they if they take a few minutes to get filled and I don't necessarily give that a second thought, but I would do a little bit of research if you are interested in, in sort of, um, I, I don't know if you want to use high frequency or, or more day trading type activity, um, check in on that and see if that is something that would bother you if you wanted to use this platform. So the on-demand feature is over here in the right-hand corner. And basically what it does is you get to relive any day in the market since like the dawn of time. And I'm kidding in that regard. I know that there's some limit in terms of the data that's available, but so on-demand lets you relive any day in the market. And it does have a little bit of limitations in that it's not going to let you relive very recent days and I'll show you a quick example. So right now I'm recording this on January 28th. It doesn't have the data in here for the 27th, but if I want to go back to, for example, January 6th and relive that day, I can just, I can even go into pre-market if I want to. And it's going to do pre-buffering over here in the corner. It's going to give you a default amount of $100,000. You can, I think you can change that if you want to. I, I've never really tried, but that might be something that you can do. 
it'll tell you that this is a virtual account and you know that it is a virtual account as well by this gold platform right here. Um, so if you are ever seeing other people on YouTube or anywhere who are demonstrating trades and this gold line shows up, just be mindful that that means it's a, it's a virtual account. And I'm not saying that it's nefarious that they might be doing that. They, there could be a very specific reason for using a virtual account. But if they're um, acting like it's real money, then maybe you, you want to call it into question. But in any event, this is it'll let you relive any day in the market, which I think is really interesting. So right now, it is telling me that it's 9.28 a.m. on January 6th, and the market's going to open at 9.30. So we're we're right here. So this is as if the market is about to open on January 6, 2021. And so if you wanted to try your hand at day trading, you can come in and play around in this. If you want to fast forward, you can add a few more minutes, push go. It's going to pre-buffer in the corner and it's going to take you into 9:49 market time and you can see the market activity. If you want to uh, pretend to trade, you can go here. It's January 6th, so let's just pretend like we're going to use the night, the expiration. We have $100,000 in this account. I want to sell a naked put just for kicks. I'm trading in the ticker SPY. And as on January 6th, it was trading around 371. So I'm going to trade a naked put at 182. So this is a good simulation to get you up to speed and familiar with what it means to open a trade to set up a trade to really understand the break evens the max profits the max loss the buying power effect and note also for thinkorswim that the default numbers for options is 10 i often will um just take that down to one because that's i usually only trade in single lots and then you can get a more accurate reflection of what a single options trade would look like. You can hit send. And so this is a simulated naked put in SPY at the 360 strike that just got filled. If you want to see what that looks like in the simulation, that you come over to monitor activity and positions and you can see where it was filled. You can see also that I collected $184 in fake money into this virtual account. And if I want to sell it, I'm going to, I can go ahead and do that. When you exit out of this, it'll reset. You can push reset here, reset account. So that is on demand. I think this is a really useful feature. If you are just still a little uncomfortable with the idea of options trading and you want to just play around with it without committing some of your own money, I would highly encourage you to, if you can, open up a TD Ameritrade account for this feature and this feature alone. So coming back into the real account, they have market watch. You can build watch. They have a market watch tab. You can build watch lists. Their tools tab is here. Their education tab, similar to what they had online, is here. I got to be honest, you guys. I don't use this stuff. All I do is I come in here and I look at the charts, and I will occasionally look at time and sales to sort of get an idea of what's going on. I will occasionally trade options in here, and that's it. I will say in large part that I probably haven't gone any farther than that because it does have a steep learning curve. And for my style of trading, I don't need any more sophisticated functionalities than what I'm currently using. But it is a good platform for um, for all types of traders once you can kind of get yourself comfortable and familiar with with the activity that is happening here. I have not had any problems with TD Ameritrade in terms of their margin capabilities. This account is pretty small. I've only ever sold credit spreads. It's not I have, haven't gotten big enough to the point where I want to sell any naked puts yet. So I don't have any personal experience on uh, volatility squeezes or margin calls with TD Ameritrade. I haven't heard anything on the internet about them being more aggressive than any other firm like E-Trade, but I would suggest doing your own research if that's something that you're interested in. They also have the Think or Swim mobile app. 
I don't know how to use that. <laughs> I know of at least one other YouTuber who trades by looking at the charts on their computer and then trading, executing trades from their phone. I don't know how to do that. I, it, but I'm not a day trader or a scalper, and so I don't need to do that. Um, maybe if someone can teach me how to use the Thinkorswim mobile app, that would be awesome. So I don't want to give Thinkorswim or TD Ameritrade a short shrift, but again, this is the most recent account that I've opened. I have the least experience with this account, so I would hate to talk about something that I don't have that much familiarity with beyond my um, current usage rate. So if you are a viewer of this channel and you're at this point in the video, by the way, thank you for being the, coming this far in the video. I know it's already long enough. And there are certain capabilities about the Thinkorswim platform that you know and love and you want to share with others. Please do me a favor and drop them in the comments below so that others can benefit from your helpful and valuable knowledge about the platform. I don't want to tell anyone not to use Thinkorswim um, based on my experience, and I would rather them learn about it on their own or learn about it from your experience if you have positive things to say, or even if you have negative things to say. If there's something that you know really sucks about them and you want to warn others, definitely let us know that too. All right, well, if you've made it this far, I just want to give you a huge virtual hug and thank you. This is probably the longest video that I will ever make on this channel. And I guess I can't really hold myself to that because I might change my mind in a couple of years or a couple of months, but I appreciate you if you've made it this far. I know it's not the most exciting or sexy content that's out there, but people have asked about my personal opinions on the platforms. I think at this point, if I was going to rank them in order of which ones I would recommend for newer traders or um, smaller accounts, swing trading, conservative style trading. I think that I would rank them in the order of Tastyworks first because it's a very simple and functional platform and it's easy to use, followed by E-Trade in part because that has more investment products. And then in third, I would say Thinkorswim or TD Ameritrade. Um, but that is my personal opinion and I could be persuaded to think otherwise if if you have something that you want to say that could make me um change my mind all right everybody so that's it for the video again if you've made it this far into this really long video thank you so much for being here i appreciate each and every one of you more than you probably realize and i um like i said at the very beginning i'm here for you i'm here for your questions i'm here to help you get comfortable with the idea of options trading um so I appreciate you and all the effort that you make to watch my videos as well as stick around and, and power through the ads and um, and help my channel to reach other people like you. So um, again, thank you very much for making it through this long, long video. So I started a Patreon and I'm c continuing to think about it and how I want it to best help you as individual traders. I don't want to be boasty or you know look at all my accounts and all the things that i'm doing but i sometimes do think that it is helpful for others to you know learn about what other traders are doing so i started a patreon and the links are in the, all of the descriptions below i have attached a discord to that patreon and trust me when i tell you that and you maybe you'll be surprised when you see the link like the the entrance the monthly entrance fee to my patreon is so extremely cheap that i it's my i never want to make access to me or access to discord cost prohibitive i mean it's one of my biggest pet peeves ever but there i've decided to create a patreon only discord to attach to the patreon channel as a place, a safe place for new traders to ask questions if they want to reach me. Um, I do not and will not treat this Discord as a trade alert service, a, a signal service. You're not going to get anything from me that says, you know, trade this now at these levels. That's, that is not my style. I'm not prepared to do that. And I don't think that would be of any help to you, but I want it to be a chat function or feature that people of like mindedness can come together and, talk to each other about options trading in a in a manner that is safe and comfortable and um, 
casual and relaxed. And and so with those caveats, I will also say that I'm not going to be on that Discord 24 hours a day, but I have access to it on my phone. I will check it regularly. I have access to it on my computer. I will check it regularly. And this is just one other way to, to reach me. The patron also will post my monthly options income trading activity at the end of every month, how much money I've made every month, um, how much money I've made from dividends. I can show you that if that's interesting to you, how much, what long stocks I'm holding in each of my accounts and when I decide to sell them. Again, not recommend, not trade recommendations, but just to give you guys an idea of what I'm actively doing on my end, just so, just to be transparent and just to, just to know that I'm not just some rando over here just talking about options trading without like backing it up with substance. So that is in the link in all of the descriptions below. Check it out if you want. If you have any more specific questions about it and what, what I'm offering it to um, members, of course, I'm happy to answer questions about that. So, so that is an update that is there for you. I have plenty of other videos coming down the pipeline. Please let me know. And again, I'm sorry to make this so long, but do you as YouTube viewers want me to post how much money I made on YouTube through ad revenue at the end of every month, at the end of every quarter? Same question for, do you want me to tell you how much money I made options trading at the end of every month in all of my accounts or at the end of every quarter or just yearly? I don't want to post anything that would be boring or repetitive or just like kind of ad nauseum to you. So please, again, if you've made it this far, let me know. And you don't have to answer in the comments if you don't want to. You can shoot me an email at tiffanytradesoptions at gmail. Again, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. I appreciate if you've made it this far. And if you found any value in this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button so that we can reach other like-minded traders like yourselves. Okay, bye.